With the explosion of streaming service entertainment, cinematic level TV shows and a superhero renaissance, the TV industry as a whole has evolved above and beyond what was ever expected of it. And yet, it remains as fickle a business as ever. Thus, while this new decade will no doubt bring forth plenty of incredible new beginnings, it will also see plenty of shows reach the end of the line. A huge number of TV shows are already set to bow out this year, with long-standing favourites like Arrow, Supernatural and Criminal Minds wrapping up their impressive runs. While others have been taken away before their time and unceremoniously cancelled before they even had a chance to make it out of the first month of the decade. So with all that in mind, I'm Gareth from WhatCulture.com and I'd like to invite you to join me in paying our respects to these 10 TV shows that just got cancelled. Number 10. The Dark Tower a project initially envisioned as a companion to the 2017 film The Dark Tower, the series was due to see Idris Elba reprise his role as the gunslinger. But following the critical failure of that film, Amazon bought the rights to the series and redesigned it to serve as a full-on reboot. With EastEnders and Nightflyer star Sam Strike set to play the role of Roland and Jasper Parkinen taking over the role of the Man in Black from Matthew McConaughey. However, it was recently revealed that Amazon have decided to not move forward with the project, which, considering how wonderful Stephen King's source material actually is, it's a bit of a darn shame, I tell you. But on that note, don't give up hope just yet, as the production company MRC is attempting to shop the two scripts to other networks. So keep your pistols crossed. That sounded a lot better in my head. Number 9, Limetown. The Jessica Biel and Stanley Tucci starring mystery drama Limetown will unfortunately not be returning to screens for a follow-up to its freshman offering, as Facebook Watch has decided not to renew it for a second season. The 10-episode series was based on the podcast of the same name and followed a radio journalist who attempted to solve the mystery of 300 people who vanished from a Tennessee neuroscience facility. According to Deadline, rumour has it that Facebook is attempting to move away from scripted shows and in the future it will be setting its sights on more non-scripted content instead. And as Limetown wasn't the only show to be cancelled in one fell swoop by the Video On Demand service, more on that later, this could very well be the case. Number 8. Confederate an alternative history drama from Game of Thrones executive producers David Benioff and D.B. Vice, Confederate was met with a bit of outcry when it was announced three years back due to the fact that it imagined a post-Civil War world in which slavery was still legal. And to take things further, it had actually evolved into a modern institution. However, the controversial series never actually made it into production, as the duo's apparent involvement in a new Star Wars trilogy, which also never happened, and subsequent deal with Netflix changed things dramatically. And now, after three years in limbo, HBO president Casey Bloys officially confirmed to TV Line that the show is dead. Number 7. Brockmeyer IFC's Hank Azaria starring comedy series followed a disgraced play-by-play -play announcer, who, after a decade of obscurity following a career-ending meltdown on air, attempts to get his life back on track by calling minor league ball in a small town. During its time on the air, it received pretty positive reviews, many of which were aimed at Azaria's solid performance, and pretty good ratings, even becoming IFC's highest rated new series during its debut year. However, Jim Brockmeyer's redemption will come to an end in the foreseeable future, as IFC confirmed in December that the show's upcoming fourth season would indeed be its last. Number 6. Runaways one of the last remaining relics of the dearly departed Marvel television, Runaways was an enjoyable adventure that showed us different aspects of the wider Marvel Cinematic Universe and showcased its youthful cast while doing so. However, ahead of the launch of its third season in December, Hulu announced that season three would indeed be its last. That being said, it had a pretty great run, and by the sounds of things, its premature cancellation had nothing to do with the show quality itself and more the loss of Marvel television as a whole. Still, it's unfortunate they won't get the chance to enchant us all one more time this year as it joins fellow cancelled Marvel series Cloak and Dagger in the TV afterlife. Number 5. Daybreak Netflix's post-apocalyptic comedy series promised to offer something a bit different to a tired old genre, and for the most part, it did just that. Based on the eponymous comic book, it boasted an impressive cast full of young stars who received support from established veterans Krista Rodriguez and Matthew Broderick. And its exaggerated tone resulted in a multitude of hilarious self-aware humour. 
Unfortunately, the streaming giant cancelled the series after just one season at the end of last year, bringing an end to Josh's journey into the apocalypse. And given how clever, witty and enjoyable the show actually was, it understandably felt like the end of the world for its devoted fans. Number 4. Sorry for your loss here we have another victim of Facebook Watch's recent cull. However, this one probably stings that little bit more. Starring Elizabeth Olsen and Kelly Marie Tran, Sorry for Your Loss tells the story of a young woman who must come to terms with the unexpected death of her husband. And in struggling to cope, she ends up reassessing everything in her life. It is unfortunate that this supposed pivot to non-scripted programming had to impact a show as well received as this one. But that's the ever-changing TV industry for you. And while Olsen herself will return to TV, streaming TV at least, in Disney Plus's WandaVision, it doesn't quite make up for this untimely loss. That being said, according to Deadline, it is being shopped around to other networks, so there may still be life in it yet. We hope. Number 3, and with an E. The much-loved Canadian period drama was a co-production between CBC Television and Netflix, the latter of which gained it a much larger following due to its global reach. But that still wasn't enough to save it from premature cancellation. That's right, in spite of the fact that the stylish series was very well received by critics and had a large following by the time it concluded its third season, CBC cancelled it at the end of the year. Though fans hoped that Netflix would swoop in and rescue the dying show, that did not happen, and the third season was marketed as its final offering. There's always hope, as CBC did encourage fans to fill out a form on their website to save it, but for the moment, its fate seems to be sealed. Number 2. Watchmen In an era of mass production such as this one, it's an admirable quality to know when less is more. And that appears to be a quality that both Watchmen's creator Damon Lindelof and HBO know a thing or two about. Watchmen arrived on the cable service at the end of last year to critical acclaim, as Lindelof's series adapted Alan Moore and David Gibbon's iconic graphic novel in a truly unique way in order to tell a complex story about systematic racism. However, HBO left the decision to continue the show in Lindelof's hands, and the creator has now confirmed that he's told the story he wanted to tell. And with that, he's accomplished everything he set out to do, and left people wanting more. It's just unfortunate for them that they're probably not gonna get it. Number 1. Mindhunter. Sort of. Okay, so all hope is not lost just yet for Mindhunter, but at this point in time, it's, it's not looking good. Netflix has placed it on an indefinite hiatus so that producer David Fincher can complete his next film, Mank. But in doing so, Fincher also released the cast from their contract so that they could pursue other projects. The veteran has envisioned the show as a five-season series, so here's hoping that he gets the chance to bring that vision to life someday. But given that some of, if not all, of the cast, which features the excellent Jonathan Groff and Holt McCallany, will no doubt land lengthy parts in other projects, he's going to have a bit of a tough time getting them all back together. And then there's the question of whether Netflix will even want to revisit it later down the line. Perhaps a movie to wrap it all up would be the more plausible option, and certainly more ideal than an official cancellation. But let's just hope it doesn't come to that, and that somehow, some way, Fincher, Netflix, and the entire cast manage to make it work someday. And that is our list. Have we missed any other shows that have recently been cancelled? Let us know all about them in the comments section below. And do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Also, why not head over to whatculture.com to read some more articles like this one. I've been Gareth from whatculture.com and I'm sure that I'm going to see you soon. Look, my son, look at the marvel that I have created. Uh, comics. They called me a fool for trying to put a dead meme onto a t-shirt. A damn bold fool! A damn bold fool with an ass that won't quit. It got quite personal towards the end there. But look who's laughing now! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Quiet! Quiet, my son, my ugly son. For my other creation rises. Look at the quality fabric, hand-stitched by blind orphans. The perfect letter spacing calculated so meticulously that Rich Hudson had an erection for months about it. And a colouring so deep that I had to buy the dye off the dark web. Oh, oh, for God's sake, Josh! Sorry, 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 sorry. <sighs> oh, Marvel. Oh no, the beast has grown angry, angered by our drab fashion choices. I am such a fool to think that it wouldn't try to infect us with its perfect, 
perfect design. Quick, we must do something to appease the beast. Why don't we buy one from shop.worldculture.com? Oh. Look, it's already got Scott Nash. Ah. Oh. Ah. oh no! But where can I buy one? Are you kidding me? This is why I don't give you any extra lines. But also, at shop.whatculture.com! Quick, let's go and buy one right now! Let's go buy one right now! Right now. Oh, don't you try hard now. You've already lost your bit. Oscar's in the f***ing bin. Ah, oh, there we go. Doesn't that look better? I feel so virile and alive. And it's also fixed your hump. That's actually pretty good. Now, do yourself a favor and act like your mum and spread the love, aka her legs, and buy yourself one of these glorious dead memes on a t shirt, courtesy of this handsome chap right here. You're very, very welcome. Cut! Jesus Christ, mine is oh, so it's itchy. All wet. Ah. What? Ah. It stinks. I pissed on yours. Ah. The worst font ever. I'm gonna die. <sighs>